Hello Vinyl community, uh, I'm back to do a recent Vinyl Finds video, um, Home Alone today. Uh, so I'm playing some free jazz and doing some reading. Thought of making a video of the, the stuff that I bought recently. Uh, I got a package today actually, uh, and uh, by via a coincidence, no, but yeah. Uh, I bought some magazines from, I think the owner of Melotronen. Uh, records, but I'm not sure. He's involved in it anyway. So I got 29 copies of Downbeat from 1990-ish uh, for uh, a buck each. So super happy to to grab uh, those. Uh, good read uh, during the autumn slash winter that's coming. <laughs> Listening to some uh, music and reading. Uh, very very relaxing and cool. And yeah, playing in the background, you can't hear it now because I turned it off just now. Uh, it's GL Unit Rango Tank, but it's it's a highly recommended uh, record for all you jazz, free or jazz fans. Uh, yeah, listening to that this evening. Uh, so yeah, let's let's go. Let's get into the the record. So I'm gonna start with the jazz stuff first, and then uh, close it all down with the, uh, the non-jazz. And I think I have like five jazz records. So first of all, uh, I got myself a copy of Ibis Saba Abbas Mandlar uh, from 19, I think 80. Um, their second release and final, maybe I think so. Um, and it's on the Dragoon label or Dragon, the Swedish uh, Dragon label. Um, yeah, fantastic record. Really, really good. I, I thought this was fantastic. Uh, you have Bengt Andrid, the only one I know of the outfit here. Ed Epstein, Stefan Eskson, Justa Nilsson, Tommy Johansson and Mats Hellberg. Maybe I know about Hellberg. I'm not sure. Two songs on each side. Really, really good. Uh, and I got this in a trade I did with a guy on Facebook, actually, uh, on a Swedish Vinyls, vinyl Facebook page. We traded some rarities uh, with each other. Sending, I, I sent 14 records and he sent me 11, I think, uh, that I had doubles of and stuff like that. Now, when I'm on my parental leave, I don't have the budget that for buying so much records. Uh, so then you have to go for other solutions like trading, and that worked out fine. The next one, also in the trade, that I grabbed from him was Summertime uh, by Shiyoshi Yamamoto Trio, uh, live in Five Days in Jazz 1976. And I do have the Midnight Sugar record by the same trio from 1974, and I thought that was brilliant. So when he said that he had this one on the Three Blind Mice uh, record label, I, bought, uh, I, I grabbed it, or whatever you say, right away. There's a label there. Quality-wise, I mean sound quality-wise, it's fantastic. It's uh, it sounds so good, and this is a live record, uh, but it's recorded so damn fine. And music-wise, it's fantastic. They only do one original by Yamamoto. Otherwise, it's like uh, someone in love. If you could see me now and Misty on the first side, and sometime, and the way you look tonight, together with the original uh, Cooking the Blues on the second side. <laughs> Fine as Japanese jazz, and I'm gonna keep buying Three Blind Mice releases when I see them for a great price or a good price, at least, uh, because uh, it's hard to to get a hold of samples and stuff like that. Uh, but the stuff that I've heard from the label uh, up till now is just great, so uh, it's it's gonna be fun to explore the Japanese jazz scene from the 70s, the 70s. Uh, another one I got, uh, not in the trade but online, was this one, uh, Marion Brown's Afternoon of a Georgia Fawn, and this is ECM number 1004, so it's the fourth ECM release ever, uh, ever. Um, and it's the, the German press. And you have Anthony, Anthony Braxton, Shikoria and Benny Mopin along with a lot of other players. And two tracks, one on each side. And I have to say, I've heard about the record, but I never heard the record before I got it. 
and this was a little bit of a miss for me, I have to be honest. I don't think that the first track, uh, Afternoon uh, of a Georgia Fawn, the title track is that good. It's too much experimental for me. Uh, feels like they try to accomplish something that they can't really reach. Uh, something that maybe shouldn't be on record. I don't know. That's just my opinion. Please comment and give me your opinions. Uh, the, the second track, uh, Gingy's Corner, uh, was better. But still, I had so much anticipation and, and hopes for it. So it just fell flat for me. For me. And last one in the jazz section is Multiplications with Eric Gale, 1977, uh, with Steve Gadd and a lot of other late 70s studio musicians from this time. Uh, sounded pretty good. A decent jazz rock funk record. Typical 77, 78 kind of sounding record. Polished. Not my favorite, but it's, it's okay. Uh, and I got it for like next to nothing, two bucks maybe, something like that. So I just I took a chance on it. Now to the more uh, non-jazz related stuff and this was in the trade uh, the 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 peak of the of the trade i did it with this facebook guy uh, and i'm super happy to have it now in my collection <laughs> this is stenblomma alla träd har samma rot and yeah that's like um, stone flower uh, all trees have the same root and uh, this is one of the rarest ones that you can find on the Silence label and it was issued 1973. So there you go, there's the label. You have a number sticker on, no, no, printed, uh, right, written uh, number on the label and a sticker here and it's hard to get rid of so I just think I'll, I'll leave it there. So that's, that's a shame but uh, it's, like I said, it's a rare one, uh, one that I wouldn't buy for money it's too expensive so trading this was just awesome um, and it's a lot of people but uh, to sum up uh, some players from Trädgräs och Stenar uh, is playing on that one it's a, a political record and with a lot of vocals and the vocals I can do without and the political lyrics I can do without um, but the instrumental parts and the musicianship of all the tracks is awesome so uh, that makes up for the entire record not my favorite prog record uh, that I have in my collection but a neat piece to have in the collection and I've also on a, uh, on a uh, it's called Fair um, record Fair I found an original press of Hansen Carlson's Monument finally uh, one of the best records ever recorded in Sweden I've said that before uh, and to have uh, original press of this in fantastic condition and for that price I paid like 32 bucks maybe something like that for it uh, and I think that that's a pretty neat price for for it 250 crumbs uh, in that condition I mean you can't go wrong um, got this when I was in Stockholm to see uh, Paul McCartney uh, Broken Promised Land by Wheaton Willows and all you guys uh, who likes pop uh, a little bit more mellow pop rock should check this out. It's all in English um, It's really 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 good uh, 1997 they issued this uh, Got very popular uh, and has been since on lists in Sweden for best Swedish records ever recorded blah 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 uh, but they never issued it on uh, vinyl and this year on Record Store Day uh, they released it uh, as a Record Store Day exclusive 500 copies and I have number 306 uh, I was gonna buy it on Record Store Day uh, but I couldn't be there so I got all the stuff I wanted and needed online uh, but that just that record didn't pop up online uh, and uh, soon after that I figured out it was uh, sold out I don't know if that's the case still but um, when I saw it in Stockholm I, I grabbed it still for a great price and I think that that record will skyrocket so if you see it all you Swedish guys or international uh, if you see it uh, buy it now because I think that that will go up 500 copies is not much uh, for that record 
uh, that's never been issued on vinyl before. <coughs> Refused. Uh, freedom. First record in 15 years, 10 years, something like that. And the follow up to uh, The Shape of Punk to Come. Uh, hardcore, a little bit more maybe on the commercial poppy side. Um, but still a fantastic, fantastic record. And probably they issued this in 2000 colors. Uh, yeah, limited deluxe. Show, hey, show. I got the black one um, and I got it for a great price uh, in a huge mega store in Sweden called Gekos figuring that out buying uh, refused records on in Gekos all you Swedish watchers mental um, another one on the f that I got on the fair was uh, our mother the mountain by Townsend Sant, 1978 and uh, Be Here to Love Me is maybe the most known track uh, Why she acted this way maybe? Fantastic record almost a 10 it's it's so damn good um, yeah and if I find more uh, tons of sand stuff I'm gonna buy it but they are pretty expensive when you find them in Sweden and I've never seen one locally or around this area uh, not an original US press at least uh, so yeah fantastic to to see it and I think I paid seven bucks for it something like that not too shabby next one Kraut Rock, some say epitaph by uh, or epitaph with outside the law their third record like a psychedelic, very inviting uh, gatefold and cool looking back backside. And it actually sound I thought that this would be more kraut rocky, but it actually sounded more like heavy rock, hard rock. Uh, and I can't see the kraut rock qualities of this. Uh, and it's a decent record, but it's not like mind blowing at all. Uh, I've read about it and saw it, so when I saw it for a great price, I, I jumped on it without knowing what I bought. Really, uh, maybe I have to go back to that. I don't know, but yeah, one that I don't need to get back to, I don't think so anyway, is Delaney by Delaney Bremlet, uh, famous for Delaney and Bonnie. Uh, his first solo record in mid 70s, no, early 70s, 72. Um, we had a lot of those guys who played on, on the Delaney Bonnie and Friends. Uh, yeah, his solo career, I read that his solo career wasn't that good and he was like, this says it all. This sums up the record, I think. Backside there. Don't need to talk about that. Next one we need to talk about. Um, this is a cool release by Melotron and Records. Uh, came out two years ago, maybe. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna show it. Vilsiana uh, Tro, Want So Much To Believe, Volume 1. This is a soundtrack to a 70s Swedish movie with Christina Skolin and Johnny Nash. And the movie should be like so-so, I haven't watched it yet. Uh, but you have players like John Rabbit Bundrick and Johnny Nash playing uh, the music, along with musicians Bob Marley, Rebop, Janne Schaffer, Björn Linder, Bo Hagström, Ola Brunket and Fred Jordan. So what you have here is like the director or whoever decided to do the soundtrack and what they should do dragged Nash over from the States, I guess, here to play a part in the movie and do the soundtrack. And he bra uh, bra brought along, I don't know if Rebop came with that train, uh, but Bob Marley and Rabbit Bundrick. <laughs> Uh, to play with studio musicians here in Sweden, Janne Schaffer and Ola Brunkert. Um, and Bob Marley was this unknown artist on Jamaica that was pretty good on guitar and they brought him. He lived, he lived in a basement in Sweden for three months. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And after the sessions he went to, back to Jamaica and became world famous. Uh, Bundrick had played with uh, The Who and Sandy Danny and Free, I think, and uh, Rebop had played with, um, I don't know if that was Free also, or uh, No Traffic, I think he played with uh, Steve Winwood and those guys, um, 
and then he did his famous uh okay i can't can't remember the title now but um Reebok Kwaku Ba record on Philips that they did here in Sweden with Jan Schaffer and those guys back in 1972 I think a year after this um so yeah there's a, a photo the only photo of Bob Marley from that sessions uh it's there with his back turned to the camera unfortunately what you get is also a booklet with all the stuff that I told you so you don't need to buy it now and uh the DVD uh with the movie uh, and there's also a volume 2 that I have, but I haven't played that yet. I've had this for a year, at least a year, maybe one and a half, but wasn't in the mood to, to play it. Uh, it's Music wise, it's poppy, a little bit soulful with a lot of Nash in it. Um, you can't really hear the Swedish influences in the music with uh, Jan Schaffer's guitar and stuff like that, so it's it's pretty dull for me, but it's a decent soundtrack um, to an undecent movie, <laughs> I've heard. So, so, but historical-wise, music historical-wise in Sweden, it's very, very cool and I believe important. And it's awesome for that Mellotron and uh, put it out. Um, they they did a good job on the package too. So, um, yeah. Awesome. I got it for a great deal on a Swedish online shop. Uh, that's why I got them. So that's it. 16 minutes. Uh, leave us comments if you want. And I'll talk to you soon.